All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend a little time today talking about playas. Uh, normally, I can talk about playas for uh, four to six hours at a time without stopping, but I'll try to get it all fit into in about 20 minutes here. Playas are the, the keystone ecosystems of the Southern High Plains. Without playas, uh, life and biodiversity on the Southern High Plains would be greatly reduced. So what are playas? Playas, <clears throat> in short, uh, are very complex ecosystems that are shallow depressional recharge wetlands that exist in their own watershed. So despite the numbers of playas on the landscape, they are all independent uh, from one another and kind of function individually. They have a, they're identified by a very unique soil, typically a Montmorillonite type clay with a very simple water budget. If it rains, they get water. If it doesn't rain, they go dry. But a very, very complex ecology um, that we're still trying to learn about. So how were they formed? There's a great deal of, of controversy over the years or decades about how playa is formed. There's no real consensus uh, about which process is more important, whether it's dissolution, which is water going through cracks in the soil and dissolving underlying structures uh, and causing the, the land to slump and form these depressions, or wind, uh, which then, you know, with in that part of the world, the wind is quite effective at blowing uh, dirt around. And so uh, there is some role of wind in terms of playa ecology. Uh, but essentially, the way I look at it is dissolution processes over thousands of years forms the depression and wind maintains the depression because these things are relatively shallow depressions that can fill in with sediment or soil very, very quickly. And as a result, um, the wind is necessary to maintain that depression. Playas are of unknown age and probably multiple ages across the landscape, um, but the playas are continually expanding. Each time it rains, uh, they expand a little bit more, but it's a tiny, tiny bit, like less than millimeters at a time. So where are playas located? Uh, playas are the dominant surface water feature in the high plains of the Great Plains, or in other words, west of the 100th meridian. Playas primarily overlie the Ogallala Aquifer across um, Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, a few in uh, Nebraska, and there are some people that claim there's some playas in Wyoming and Montana, but uh, those are probably not true playas in my opinion. Uh, the largest size and density of playas occurs on the southern high plains of, of Texas and New Mexico, or in other words, the Llano Estacado or south of the Canadian River. This area is a highly altered landscape. It's been prairie for about 11 million years. The current assemblage of uh, plants up until humans um, altered the landscape have been around for about 100, well, about 10,000 years. However, during the last 150 years or so, there's been extensive changes to the landscape, um, primarily conversion of short grass prairie and shrublands to row crop and grazing agriculture. Uh, playa wetlands occur in a very dynamic and extreme environment. Um, it's a very unpredictable rainfall. It uh, can be very hot, can be very cold. Uh, as a result, there is a the, the organisms, both plants and animals, have to endure and adapt to a very unpredictable situation when it comes to the environment. Um, across uh, the uh, area of the playa is we have a, a kind of a large gradient in terms of our understanding of ecological knowledge. So on the Southern High Plains, you know, we've been basically researching or, or investigating playas <clears throat> uh, from an ecological perspective since the 1970s. And we have considerable ecological knowledge of these systems. Whereas in the Central High Plains, we have some ecological knowledge uh, of those systems, and they do differ quite a bit from the Southern High Plains. And then in the Northern High Plains, there hasn't been a whole lot of study of these systems up here. Uh, these are tiny, tiny playas in most cases, uh, and there's just not a lot known about how these systems work when you get from you know Central and Northern Kansas, uh, Eastern Colorado, and, and Southern Nebraska. So, <clears throat> On the southern Great Plains, or the Llano Estacado, where the playas are the biggest and the, and the densest, um, the average size of the playas, you know, roughly about, you know, 13 to 15 acres. 
Um, about 87% are uh, less than 12 hectares or less than 30 acres in size. However, in the central and the northern high plains, playas are quite a bit smaller. Uh, most of them are less than one hectare or less than two and a half acres, with the vast majority less than a half an acre. <clears throat> Excuse me. The number of playas prior to settlement are unknown, and the current number of existing playas is currently unknown uh, as well. I mean, we have an idea of how many depressions are out there, but how many are actually functioning as a playa wetland is is difficult to understand. Is difficult to determine. <clears throat> so, what makes a playa a playa? Obviously, you have a depression, and uh, but not all depressions are playas. Um, and so what makes the playa apply is the soil. The soil defines the playa location. The soil has a very set of unique characteristics, primarily shrinking and swelling um, in response to the environment. When it's wet, the playa soils swell. When it's dry, they shrink and large cracks form. Um, just because there is a depression and water collects does not mean that a playa exists or even remains in that area. You may have what we call proto um, playas or historical playas that may be buried by uh, eroded materials from the surrounding uplands. Another thing that makes a playa a playa is it's got a very closed watershed in, it, in, in the depression. So playas are not uh, directly connected to one another. Uh, they operate independently from uh, in response to the environment. And as a result, one playa can look totally different from its neighbor playa uh, despite the fact that, you know, they might be within a few hundred feet or very close to each other. It's a very dynamic environment that creates a playa. A playa can be dry, it can be wet, and we can't predict when it's going to be in either one. Um, but it's really important to realize that this wetting and drying is normal, natural, and a, a essential part of the playa environment. By uh, stabilizing a playa, making it dry all the time, or making it wet all the, all the time, essentially uh, cripples it from an ecological perspective. So precipitation or the lack of precipitation is the primary ecological driver of playas. Um, and so this is a graph of the number or the percent of wet playas during January for a period of time when I was working um, down there on some waterfall work. And you can see that in years, um, like 2004, we had very low numbers of wet playas on the Southern High Plains and Panhandle of Texas, as opposed to uh, 2005 when during January, when there was, you know, all over 50% of the playas had water in them. And so there's a very dynamic, and it's really hard to predict from one year to the next, how many playas are going to hold water and when they're going to hold water. But that's what makes it fun. So playas differ from most other wetlands in terms of the ecological state from stable to unstable. A playa stable ecological state is dry. Unlike most other wetlands, their stable state is wet. And so when a playa over time goes from dry, it'll get wet after a, a rainstorm event. And then right after a rainstorm event and it floods, it starts drying out again. And so eventually it will reach a point where um, it's gone through a lot of different hydrological uh, features and eventually um, return to this dry, stable state. So a disturbance in a playa is getting wet um, and it's dry most of the time, whereas in a normal wetland, a disturbance is going dry. So we understand that all wetlands need some sort of disturbance, but playas function differently than all other, all other wetlands. And... What's kind of interesting is the stable state of playas is where is when when biodiversity is very low, and the unstable state of flooded playas, the biodiversity is very high. So most people don't recognize playas unless they're flooded, and see all the birds and the amphibians and uh, all the other species that associate with wet playas, and don't think much of dry playas. But a dry playa is just waiting for it to rain and become a wet playa, and so all the plants and animals are adapted to this sort of uh, hydrological cycle. Uh, there's a lot of convict conflicting views of playas in that you know people look at playas like you see here in the upper left and think that there's really no life out there whatsoever. 
Uh, and But then they look at a playa like the lower right and they say, well, that looks like any other wetland, you know, across the United States or any other freshwater inland wetland. The interesting point is, is all four of these pictures are of the same playa, just different years or different times during the same year. And so playas are very unique in that they can quickly and rapidly change uh, in response to the environment. So playas are important beyond the high plains. Um, so the hydrological isolation of playas on the high plains does not equal ecological isolation. And you have to consider the cumulative value of playas rather than the uh, sheer individual playas or each in the, or each playa individually when you start thinking about the, the value of playas. So we think of playas as a network or a system rather than just an association of isolated wetlands out in the landscape. So the influence of playas can be considered hemispheric rather than just the high plains. Um, best example of this is migratory birds. Uh, here is a map of pintails that we tagged on the playas of the southern high plains of Texas <clears throat> and where they went. Uh, and you can see that the, the birds that winter in Texas go all over North America. And as a matter of fact, some went to Siberia. And as a result, if the playa system disappeared or went away, then that valuable um, habitat for pintails and other migratory birds would be lost. And that would affect uh, not only the birds and the people that live on the high plains, but also ecological systems across the entire northern hemisphere. Playas are <clears throat> rec recognized nationally and internationally as vital and important. The North American Waterfall Management Plan, which is, uh, you know, has a joint venture called the Playa Lakes Joint Venture uh, that recognizes the value of, of playas across North America. Uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service recognizes playas in a lot of different initiatives. Uh, ecosystem management is, is one of them, but there's also been a, a series of initiatives associated with playas through uh, the federal government. And then other non-government organizations like the Nature Conservancy and Ducks Unlimited all have uh, focused uh, conservation efforts related to playas. So why are they important? Um, the ecological services of playas or what they provide include things like biodiversity, habitat for a variety of different species, or in fact, most species that live on the Southern High Plains and the High Plains in general. They provide aquifer recharge, flood control, uh, refugia for native plants. Uh, they improve water quality, um, but it's really difficult to, to tell from a conservation perspective is which plies are important. All of them, none of them, or some of them. And so the question becomes, what makes one playa more important than another playa and a priority for conservation? Usually it's based off the degree of anthropogenic impact. So if it's plowed, pitted, ditched, diked, you name it, the more impacts on a playa, uh, the, the perceived lower value of that wetland. Um, but perhaps there's other criteria that should be used to judge the value of individual wetlands for conservation. And we'll return to that in a little bit. Um, so how many playas are needed to provide the current level of ecological services? Uh, on the Southern High Plains or the Llano Estacado, which is what we considerly historically call the Playa Lakes region, about, um, or the Southern Great Plains that includes the Llano Estacado, uh, about only, 0.2% of the historical playas had no modifications or no impacts whatsoever. 17% are completely gone. And this is from a study that was like 15 years ago. So this these numbers may have changed. But we found that 60% are functionally lost despite the fact that there's a depression. They no longer function as a playa. In the Smoky Hill, Vil Smoky Hill River watershed of Kansas, up here in Northwest Kansas, about 5.4% of the playas had no modifications, but 22% were completely lost from the historical record. So playas contribute to ecological services through flood control. Uh, they are na nature's con flood control of the high plains. Uh, there are really no other major lakes, rivers, and streams until you get to the, to you know, throughout most of, of the high plains. And so playas do that flood control service. 
They provide um, native plant refugia um, for 350 species of plants in the Southern Great Plains and another 100 species in Colorado and Nebraska. They support over 200 species of birds that are attracted to these habitats created by plant communities that respond to a changing environment. So as the playas change, the birds move. And so playas are critically important during migration. So you only see uh, birds during a very short period of time, sometimes only a day or two, but they at that during that period, playas are very, very important. Uh, there's about 14 different uh, species of amphibians that uh, use playas, toads, frogs, and salamanders that are very highly adapted to wet, dry conditions. Very important component of the playa food web, but very little is known about, playa, uh, about amphibian ecology and playas. Uh, we do know that there's been a tremendous decline in the last 35 years, really tremendous decline. And why that is, um, is still somewhat unknown. They provide aquifer recharge. They're the primary source of uh, uh, recharge to the Ogallala Aquifer. And because playas are the, you know, one of the dominant features for biodiversity on the High Plains, they're also very important areas for recreation, aesthetics, and research. People like to go and visit playas. If you want to go see ducks, you want to go see butterflies, you want to go see um, other species, you go to playas. What's often overlooked is the transitional nature of playas, where most plants and animals use playas for a relatively short period of time, whether it's for migratory uh, species or resident, even resident species. They're only there for a short period of time because the environmental conditions are short-lived that support these animals. So playas provide subsidies from an ecological perspective where the effect or the value of, of species is not measured in real time but really measured or should be considered elsewhere for migratory birds or birds that are animals that move or into the future for resident species. Conservation of, of playas does sound relatively easy. Um, we've had recommendations since the 90s to conserve large playas in grassland watersheds that get wet more frequent than others. But this still does not allow for a sound prioritization of playa management and conservation. So we don't really know what to do with playas or where to start with playa conservation because a lot of the playas look the same. Those dynamic conditions are constantly changing. So somebody can look at them during dry stages and go, why do we, why do we conserve this? Um, when they're not realizing that we're conserving them for them very short period of time when the playas do provide ecological benefits for a variety of species. They're wet in January relatively infrequently, and most of the plants and animals have a very fleeting presence. But the diversity of playas creates the diversity of life. So in order to understand the playa system, you have to realize that all the communities, plants and animals, are responding to those existing playa soils their surrounding landscape and the dynamic environment. And if you lose any of these elements, the, the playa may cease to exist. And so here's a map of the, of the landscape just um, east of Lubbock, Texas. And you can see that there's a lot of playas on the landscape and that each one of those playas kind of exists uh, independently of the other playas, but very few of those playas have escaped any sort of alteration. Uh, and most people would say, hey, you know, if we lose one playa here or use one playa there, what is the big deal? But in reality, playas form a network and the loss of individual playas affects all of the surrounding playas. So we have to be able to understand which playas contribute the most to that network. And we've actually uh, accomplished that uh, analysis and that can be helped help people prioritize individual playas for conservation based on their role to the entire network. So if we look at connectivity within the system or within the network, we can lose up to 40% of the playas and have a connected playa system. Unfortunately, not all playas contribute equally to the connectivity of that system. 
And um, we need to be able to predict uh, future functionality of playas to determine their contribution to the system and then conserve the playas that contribute the most to the network. And so uh, the playa system is resilient, but it is weakening. And at some point in time, we're going to reach that tipping point uh, where we are no longer able to provide those ecological services uh, and these wonderful, uh, beautiful, uh, very um, ecologically critically important wetlands will begin to disappear at a much faster rate than they are now. And then all of the plants and animals associated with these playas will also suffer and no longer be, you know, widespread across the landscape. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, Dave, thanks for your talk. Um, I'm still, I, I'm not sure what to think about playas exactly because um, you say that they drain into themselves, but they're also connected in a drainage network. And I think this is a really important question. This is one of the reasons I, I wanted to have this conference is because we have, um, I guess I'm speaking to the audience sort of, but you know, we have a lot of playas in town, in these cities, Lubbock and Amarillo, that we've built all the way around them. And now we had 50, 60 acres that flooded just in May. And it's because we thought of it as a, as a structure that only drains into itself and it's not connected to the Red River or to the Canadian River. And so I'm wondering if you can speak about that a little bit because these playas are connected and draining into themselves in large flood events. And as we increase our impervious surface within the city, they sort of function like playas, but they sort of function more like impoundments or maybe they need to function more like streams in uh, urban environments. So can you speak to that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, you know, playas are isolated in which their watersheds um, really do don't allow under natural conditions uh, flow from one playa to the next. Um, now there are playas that occur uh, kind of, there are some examples where smaller playas will, will overflow into larger playas. The problem with playas in urban situations is the amount of runoff due to development is much greater than it has been historically. And the drainage patterns have been highly altered uh, in, in that probably a lot of those smaller playas that used to catch that water um, are no longer there. I know that's true in Lubbock, and I'm pretty sure that's true in Amarillo based off my 30 years in that part of the world, whereby by, this, by removing smaller playas and then altering the drainage so that much greater volume of water than ever historically before went into those playas um, results in that sort of extensive flooding because the playas under normal conditions would not have experienced that amount of water and they can really handle just about any sort of uh, flooding event. In, in a natural condition outside of urban situations, I rarely saw um, large playas roll into or over or overflow into other drainage areas or drainage ditches. There's a little bit over, you know, <clears throat> uh, Blanco Canyon and in some of those other canyons on the east side of the of the of the Cap Rock, but for the most part, uh, the playas themselves were always big enough to handle any sort of volume under natural conditions. But throwing up that impervious uh, uh, <clears throat> surfaces, uh, just removing or eliminating um, smaller plies that used to hold water, and then basically shunting in tremendous amounts of water from and from roads and other areas that normally would not have gone into those plies, um, greatly increased the amount of volume that you that historically those plies never experienced. 